All right, hey everybody, it's Marissa, I'm Kissa, and it is Wednesday, the 27th of January, and this is Floss Tube number 14. Um, my name's Marissa. This is a channel about mostly cross stitch. We're going to talk about a new little adventure at the end, um, but other than that, it's pretty cross stitch centered. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> um, it's been a month almost. So I, the last time I filmed was on January 1st. So we're like right about four weeks. That's about how often I can get to y'all. Um, I did do my hair this time though. I put heat on my hair for the first time in probably a year. But I cut it the other day. We did uh, family haircuts, which means I cut everybody's hair. And oh, my daughter was really sad that her hair seemed shorter, even though she has really long hair and I didn't cut very much of it off. Um, so I cut my hair too. And so I wanted to see if I actually like made it to where it would look okay. My hair is wavy naturally and almost borderline curly. And so, um, I wanted to see what it looked like when it straightened. So I did it on and on work day just to make sure that I wasn't going to look weird. Um, but yeah, and new spot. Um, it was really funny right after I finished filming last video, I sat down and was doing a zoom call and I had my camera pointed this way. And I was like, Oh, you can see my quilts and oh, you can see my plant. I'm just going to film over there. So, now I'm filming here and I'm sitting on the floor, which is fun. <sighs> okay. So I've actually been stitching a lot. I've only missed a couple days of stitching. Um, I had two really bad migraine days in a row the last two days and I didn't get very much done in those days. And one of my whips, I was gonna not have it because I was supposed to drop it off at my friend's house yesterday, but I, there was no way I was getting in a car and driving anywhere. I literally took, I had taken two of my regular migraine meds and then on top of that, uh, a couple holistic approaches and I still was hurting at the end of the night. Um, so thank goodness I woke up migraine free today because two days of that was no, no bueno. Um, so let me show you that. So what I'm talking about is our stitching group in Maine, the stitching maniacs, if you will, we are doing a round robin. And um, if you watch Helen D, you'll have seen this because she's in our group. If you watch Pam and Steph, which I feel like a majority of people who watch floss tube watch Pam and Steph. If you watch Pam and Steph, you'll see that they are doing this now too. We are actually pretty much done with ours in our group. So what I'm talking about is our lasting friendship, but from Blackbird Designs. So here's a big, bigger version of the pattern. So what we did when we started it was we all stitched this inner border and then we passed it and we didn't do anything fancy of like this is the section that you're going to stitch it was like here's all the floss that we're putting in with ours here's the fabric and stitch what you can in the amount of time that you can well covid kind of put a damper on our like monthly passing and so it's extended to longer than a year which was what we kind of originally anticipated but I'm a bad round robiner or a good one. I don't know. I worked on a good chunk of both of these projects, but so I actually have in my possession at this moment, three of the round robins. The first step is admitting that you have a problem. I can't seem to get them out of my hands. I literally drove one of them around Portland Maine for 
two weeks it's been in my purse waiting to go to my friend Cheryl's house. So it got the grand tour, um, but I decided to take it back out of my purse so that I could show you the three stitches that I have together. So I have my friend Wendy's, I have my friend Cheryl's. So now Cheryl's is done except for what she's gonna have to add at the end. And I have mine, and mine is done except for what I'm gonna have to add at the end. So I have Wendy's, Cheryl's, and mine. So I'm gonna show you all three of them because they're all very different. Wendy's is stitched on the charted fabric with the charted floss, except she made a little boo-boo and put her fabric the wrong way, oriented her fabric the wrong way. I think she's still gonna have room, she's just gonna have really small borders for when she tries to frame. So Wendy still has one more person to stitch on it. So Cheryl's gonna stitch on this and then give it to Wendy. So this is Wendy's. Oh, I do know that there were a couple people in our group that really said that they preferred um, stitching on Ada because they have a hard time seeing linen. And so Wendy's is on linen. So I know some of the people that have a harder time with linen were not able to stitch as big of portions. Um, but I did this like whole big flower pot up here and then down this side right here. So that's Wendy's. So traditional, called for, all the things. And then here is Cheryl's. Um, I believe that Cheryl's is on the called for fabric because these look pretty similar. And let me see against mine. Yeah. So Cheryl's is on the called for fabric, but it's in Ada. But she converted to color and cottons. And they are very bright. Hold those up for you. So I think she did an amazing job with her conversion. Um, they're just really fun. Like I would have never thought to put that bright pink in there. And I think it just turned out really well. So hers is done except for her. So everybody has stitched on this one, um, including Cheryl, cause she did her inner box and the wording, which is what we all did before we passed it. So that will go back to her and hers is completed ish. You'll see, they all kind of, well, I sort of feel like they'll have about a similar amount done, which I feel like is pretty good since we didn't really like plan on what needed to be done and what needed to be stitched. Oh. But so now Cheryl will get hers back and she'll get Wendy's and I got mine back. So mine is on the call for fabric, which is legacy from picture this plus and mine is at 18 count Ada. And so mine might appear a little bit more done um, than the other two, but I also, so in addition to stitching this box, I also stitched this tree before I sent mine off to go visit everybody else. So I feel like it, I don't know, it just makes it seem like I have less to do. I only have to stitch one berry basket, which makes me happy because variables aren't really my thing. I'm not excited for the ones that are on, uh, what's it called, lilies, but that's okay. It'll be fine by the time I get there and there's only two, I think. So I'm gonna stitch this one. My initials are gonna go hmm, over here in this corner because well, actually I could, there was a little, there's a little house right here that I was going to leave in, but, um, I actually might just not and stitch the whole outside like it's supposed to be and leave my initials in the middle without the house and call it good and not have to try to like wiggle it in over here. I think there's like a weird dog over there though that like, he's kind of like on an island all alone. Like there's a lot of space around him. So let me see. Here's the, this is the dog. So that spot of my chart is empty. Like of my, I asked for them to not stitch there because that was originally where I planned on putting my initials. Um, because the dog's kind of weird and alone. I don't know. 
So I might still put my initials there. We'll see. Uh, didn't get called for Whipgo this month, so I have a while to decide, which is good because I don't really feel like stitching on it after I stitched on the other twos. Let me really quick show you what... Oh, and then mine also... I asked everybody to stitch one over one. So it's on Ada, so it's not teeny tiny. It's just one over one. So it's a little bit more muted and delicate is the word that a lot of people have used um, kind of to describe it. So I'm gonna go with that. But I wanted to show you, so I, for a while, and I stopped recent, well, not recently, before the madness of the now times happened, um, I did stop getting them, but I was getting the color and cotton um, prim floss of the month. And so I pulled from my color and cotton and did the conversion, which I feel like turned out really well. So these are my flosses. If you want my conversion, I will gladly give it to you. Please just let me know that you would like it. Um, if enough people tell me that they want it, I'll just put it up on my blog that hardly ever gets used and I'll send you in that direction but this really didn't I feel like this didn't use that much floss because I still have a lot left I did I also with mine sent a little journal and I'm probably gonna pull these pages out like I just wrote like hey this is the way that I'm stitching my piece um and I put my conversion on it actually so I just have to take a picture of this to send to you I don't even have to like write it out because I already did that um and then I asked everybody to just kind of write a little a little note in it. So I have a bunch of little notes and some pictures from my friends as they pass this around. So I'll probably take those pages out and put it in like a little envelope and put it on the back of the piece when I finally frame it. But that is really exciting. That is on my Whipgo board like eventually as a I want to finish that this year. So one more time because I love it. So here's what it looks like. I feel like that's probably pretty true to color. Getting good light today. We had snow today. Um, we had snow last night, like more than they thought we were gonna get, but not like a horrible amount. Although it's been a while since um, we have had snow that's needed like plowing and the snow plow scared the bejesus out of me in probably like five in the morning. I like jumped probably 10 feet in the air out of my bed. Um, <laughs> that can be my main thing for this week. Um, when you're from California and something like shakes and rattles in the middle of the night and is like really loud, you like wake up. I don't know if I've talked about this before. I probably have. You like wake up in this like sheer panic of like, we're having an earthquake. How bad is this going to be? Because when you live in an earthquake place and you've been through many earthquakes, you like kind of hang out. Like you might get woken up at like four in the morning and you're like, can sit there for like a second to sort of gauge how bad it's going to be before you start moving. Probably not the best practice in the world, but definitely like what is like you're, you just end up training that way where like you know when you need to get out of your bed and when you don't need to get out of your bed which was like yeah so anyways I still snow plows like in the middle of the night give me that same like jolt of like okay what's going on what do I need to do okay da, da, da. oh nope everything's fine it's a snow plow. He's making sure I can go to work tomorrow. So thanks, Mr. Plow. Um, <laughs> this 
So yeah, that's what I deal with when it's like too long in between snowstorms. When we're like snow, 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 and the plow's by every day, it's fine. I'm like, okay, that's the plow, the plow is here. But like when we go like a while in between, or like so far it's been like the first storm of each season, like I like bolt upright and like freak out in the middle of the night when I hear that first plow. That is like, ugh. Anyways. So if you live in earthquake place, you know what that's like. If you live in a snow place, you know what that's like. Vermont beer, cause Vermont, you know what's in Vermont. You know who's in Vermont. You know who's from Vermont. We're doing Vermont today. All right. Ugh. I wasn't going to talk about him until later, but I just smacked my legs. Uh, Darcy Cameron, Stitchman Darcy, he cracks me up. If you um, used to watch the Vlog Brothers, like um, Hank Green and John Green back in the day, I feel like his videos vibe heavily in that direction, even though he's not like talking to anybody else. He's just, he's like a mix of both Hank and John together, and it's great. But so since I'm already talking about him, he drinks beer during his, um, he drinks beer and he slaps his legs and I just did both of those things. So apparently, I mean, can we be friends? Sure. But he was talking about in one of his videos about how he ended up with a bunch of bobbins, like leftover ones in a little floss box like this. These are my daughter's floss boxes. They're small. They have like just a couple colors for them to choose from. But he had like leftover partial skeins from, um, he works on Hades, amazing Hades, and gets great progress on them. I just lisped. I don't know where that came from, but it happened. It's fine. Um, and he was asking about what do you do with your extra flosses from floss bonds. Well, I don't have extras because, well, I don't have extra, I don't have like partial skeins. And if I do, they're in here. So I work out of a double-sided floss box. I also collect brewery stickers. Good times. I missed this one. They had a good beer that you can get all over Southern California. I missed that one. Um, but there's some great ones here. So, um, but yeah, so this is, it's double-sided. It opens like you can see, there's two rows. So it opens on each side. Um, what I do is I have one bobbin for every color. If I know I have a project that has like multiples or something like that, I might keep extra ones kind of hanging out. Or if before I started working out of that case, well, I had some, those all went into my daughter's collections, my extras that were already like labeled on bobbins, but like skeins that I do have extras of, they live in here. So these ones are backups. So they're just as their skeins and they're in my um, tin that I got like one through 35 in. And so anytime I run out of one of the bobbins in my main set of DMC, then I just go into there and see if I have a backup. And if I don't, then I go to the store. Now, someday when I'm on day 7,864 of working on a Haid and run out of a color and have to replace it and DMC has changed their dye lots, you can make fun of me. Um, but most likely, in my lifetime of stitching, hopefully they won't change all that much. And if they do, I'll be in a completely different part of the project and it won't be that noticeable. Um, but as of right now, working out of my two-sided floss box, I don't partic I don't usually take any flosses out of there. Like if I need the floss for a project, I use it, I work on that project, I wind it back up, I put it back in my floss box. Um, so I don't have a bunch of different skeins of the same DMC laying around or in partials. They all just live there. This is not harder to look through 
than this. One side goes to like 815, the other side's all the higher numbers, everything's in numerical order. Um, for designing purposes, I think it is helpful to have your stuff in color order, but um, I tend to just like go through and pull all of the colors that are like in the general vicinity of what I'm looking for and then choose from them and then put them all back. So it's not, I don't know, it, I think that it's economical because I feel like I don't have a lot of extra of flosses that I'm not gonna need. Because, like look, look what I just showed you. So, look how much le is left of all of the color and cotton. I only have like a couple more things to stitch on that pattern. And like these are, they still look almost full. So like you really don't, unless you're stitching hates, you really don't like always go through tons and tons of floss. Sometimes if they call for two, then you buy two. You know you have your backup. Or you're like, oh, I only, like when I know something's running out, it goes on my floss list of like, hey, you need to buy that next time you're at Michael's or whatever. Um, so yeah, so that was my first whip. <laughs> mm, we might have another long video on our hands. Okay, so the other non WhipGo project that I worked on, which is on my WhipGo board, but was not called last month, WhipGo is a group started by Jesse Marie of Jesse Marie Does Stuff. Um, whips are works in progress. We like our acronyms and our initialisms in um, the floss tube and stitching community a lot. Lots of good stuff in there. So for my other whip, um, I work kind of late, like two nights a week. And um, my kids wake up early. And so my husband is the early riser with the small children and I get the sleep. But um, on those two days, on the other days, it's fair game. Everyone gets up and helps. But on those two days, I get to come home, I get the bedroom to myself, and I get to like unwind at my own pace, and then that also means that I get to stitch in bed. The only thing I can see to stitch in bed, even well, I got a new light, so I can probably see more, but right now this is working out well. So I can see on my 14 count Ada project, which is Ocean ABCs from DesignWorks. So I'm stitching this on the 14 count Crunchy Ada that came in the kit. I wonder, I feel like you can kind of see these without my board behind them today. Okay. So what I've been doing, let's see, I'm gonna kind of fold this in half. It's wrinkly, I'm sorry, I just took it out of the Q-snap to show you. So I've been working over here. I never really have worked on more than one block at a time, um, but that's what I'm doing. So I am working on um, P, Q, and U. So I feel like, I mean, this is just like nights home from work progress, which is like for three weeks. I feel like that's pretty good getting there. I don't know. Sometimes I'm really tired. Sometimes my brain doesn't work. Sometimes I don't get the room to myself, which is okay. I like my husband, but, um, he knows that like, I'm super squirmy when I come home and I haven't like had a chance to wind down yet so it usually just works out for us if I get to wind down on my own um so I worked on that oh my little bobby pen's way out okay so like I cut my own bangs and for the most part I did a pretty good job but I think I did like a little bit extra and so sometimes they get like really fluffy and they stick out and then I look like I have a weird helmet head that's not happening right now because there's a bobby pin in there mm-hmm okay what else did I work on? 
The other thing that got called on Wipco was my Sleeping Princess from Mirabilia. She's beautiful. I love her. I love her bed. It makes me happy. I'm excited to, I was excited to work on her. I knew I wanted to pull her out. That's why she went on my Wipco. I just haven't really had a good excuse to and there's other things that kind of have more like a higher priority. And so I hadn't pulled her out and then she got called the first month. And so I got to take her out and work on her. And I actually got quite a bit done. So my goal for her was five days of work, of progress. So let's see. Knocking things over. It's all good. Just don't spill the drink. Okay, okay. So I worked over here. So I got like her bed sheets that go all the way down the side done. And then I got um, a good chunk of some mattresses done. And she's coming along. So she got it, some good progress. Um, I don't know when she will come out again, but she's really pretty and she makes me happy. I don't know. <sighs> Maybe after we like some goals get reached, then some more goals, then she can come out. Cause so what's happening now is my next whip goes, which we'll talk about right now. Oh wait, I have one more to show you that I did work on. So the other one that got called for me, let me talk about this one first, then we'll talk about all that other stuff, is um, Silver Creek Samplers, Christmas, my Christmas list. And last time I told you I didn't know what I, fabric it was on because I didn't keep the tag in my whip parade, but I found it and it is 36 count red from Picture This Plus. And... Here's what I got done. So I had like part of the car, but not very much of it. And I didn't have, I did all the words and then started the turkey. I don't know, this one was like, so it's 36 count, which now if I started a 36 count project, I would probably stitch it with one floss over two. The coverage is good, it's not like ugly and like, you know how your stitches can get kind of bulky? It's not like that. So I like it. The white shows up really well on it, which is good for a Christmas piece because, you know, you always got the snowflakes and stuff. Um, also, last time I talked about this and I straight up said Klee, that this was Klee. It's not, it's Klimt. I know that. I like your clumped. Anyways, had an art done for a second. Um, I don't know, I just wasn't like feeling this and it was really hard to stitch on. I did, I think part of that was because I don't have a lot of top border. And so it was like kind of really like shoved up in my Q-snap and like was weird shadowy. So I did the thing where you turn it like completely 180 and stitched on it upside down and that did help so then I was like looking in the lower right corner instead of the top left and wasn't dealing with as much like weird um what do you call it shadows and stuff but I don't know it's still it still wasn't I don't know it was a it was a chore to get through the five days on that one for some reason um I'm hoping that it was because we just finished Christmas and I was like, blah, done. Like we just cleaned all this up and now I'm stitching on it. So, um, which as luck would have it, straight up one of my other Christmas stitches that's on my Whipco board, my Deck the Hall Sal got called this month. That's my block number 20. So, Back into the Christmas world I go. Hopefully this one won't be as, um, I don't know, like not exciting to work on, but 
that's what I have so far. So that's where I'm going to be starting at. It's about half done. My goal for it was a finish. Um, that finish in the way that I'm stitching for Whipco did not have to be in this month, but I will pick that up and work on it. The other one that got called for this month, which is super exciting, is Long Dog Samplers Bienvenue. With this getting called this month, the next time you see this, it will be done. I will finish it. Um, this, is, it needs to be done. It has to be done. That's the whip go goal for it, is for it to be done. It's my youngest first sampler. She's three. Needs to be done. Oh, that's where I'm at. It is close enough. I really do think I could finish it in a month. Um, it's got one more big motif and a bunch of little stuff to fill in. But I think that that is totally doable and I'm on it. That's, I'm going to spend one more day or what is it? Three more days, four more days, 30 days, th four more days. Do you have to do the rhyme in your head to know how many days are in a month? <gasps> uh, yeah, I do. Sometimes, sometimes I know. Sometimes I don't. Like, I know when I have friends that have birthdays on, like, the 31st of months that have 31 days. But if I, like, don't really know anybody that has a birthday on the 31st of that month, I never know if they have more or less days than that. I mean, I know February is 20 days, except only beers when it has 29. But sometimes I have to say the rhyme to be able to know the thing. Let's go back to whips for a second because I forgot something. And I don't have a picture of it, what it's supposed to look like when it's done. You probably want to see that because you're not going to be able to tell. So hold tight. Isn't Google amazing? Alrighty. So this is mm, Mini Witch Way from Heaven and Earth Designs. So I'm up here in this corner. So this is my one of my two working heads. So I feel like with it'll be about this big with like a similar border on this side as on this side. It'll that's how wide it will be. It's a tall one though. Like it's portrait and it's um, layout. But um, I added around 750 stitches. I had just wanted to pick up a Hade. Um, so I sat down with it for a couple days and got some stitches in. Um, when this does come up and it is in there for a page finish on my whip go, it's set for a page finish. So I kind of want it to be primed and ready to be close to it. So I'm not super stressed out about getting there with it but who knows if that will happen or if it will be I don't know it might be one of those ones that I like say I'm just going to take the whole year to do that part of that I have a little bit of haul Not a ton. My, I still have, I have more money to spend. I got some very generous um, gift cards for Etsy for Christmas and also just some fun money to spend. So um, the first thing that I got was a Christine Stitch All The Things bag. And it has like the sparkle vinyl bottom and mermaids. And a ship it says um, homeward bound and forever. And then on this side, it's forget me not. And the inside is beautiful, which you can kind of see. Maybe there we go. And she sews a pocket into it, which is amazing because scissors can go in there and not get lost in the bottom. 
So I'm excited for that. Nothing lives in it yet. I don't know what's going to live in it. I have to decide. Maybe I start that tattoo piece from um, Emma Cogden. I've been really good about not having starts, but it's coming. I know it's coming. Something's going to come. Oh, I know what's going to happen. Park Hopper Bart released um, a Robin Hood pattern and that's going to happen. It is so cute. And that is like a total favorite, favorite, favorite Disney movie in our house. Um, he's so handsome. Apparently that fox has got it going on. So, um... Other than that, I also bought from Tracy P. She was doing a de-stash. So I got this By the Bay Needle Art. Um, it's called New England Whaling Waters. And my mom growing up had a I don't know if my dad did it or not. My dad might have done it. It was like a, it was a, I think it was like a block print or it even might have been Scrimshaw. Not, I don't think it was like on actual, like not the illegal kind of Scrimshaw to have, but that it was like, uh, it's called a New England sleigh ride, which was like when they, it's like so disturbing but like when they harpooned a whale and then the whale like dragged the um boat behind it and so it just kind of reminded me of like my parents and I don't know it's just it's a cool it's a cool stitch and um Donna of by the bay is a mainer so I was like I will take that and then I also got this awesome piece of under the sea fabrics Daphne from her that might be showing up a little bit more pink it's pretty purple but um and I don't know what will go on that it feels mermaidy or pretty lady to me so maybe you know once I finish my first mirabilia then I can stitch another one also, Color and Cotton did a, um, like a mystery little bag, and you could just pick linen, even weave, or Ada, and you could get two packages of three 8x12 pieces, and I hopped right on that and got some linen, and I know that they're mystery and, like, grab bag, but I kind of wish they had their names on them, um, I mean, I know that was, that would have been a lot more work, but, like, I... I'm pretty sure I want a model stitch on this one and so I wish that I knew what it was but um, I don't know perhaps someday when you know the world can be a world again I will so I got a nice little assortment one of my packs was colorful and one of them was neutral and that made me really happy so these are the six fabrics that I got. So they're all eight by 12 pieces. They're all beautiful and amazing. And I will find amazing projects for them. Um, it is the perfect size for, I mean, I don't tend to need giant borders. So anything that would be like, I stitch a lot of, um, when I make my patterns, a lot of them I make to fit in a five by seven frame. So these would be perfect for that. Cause it gives you like an inch and a half on the top and bottom or on one set of sides and then even more on the other sides anyways so that was my haul and then the other thing i wanted to mention so it new new hobby not new hobby world not not totally new hobby world um it's not brand new for me but it is new in new england um and that's gardening and we this winter we did a farm box um, from our local farm which I love doing we get really awesome veggies not necessarily ones that we would normally pick from the store and eat um, so that's been fun for the girls my kids are really good at trying 
whatever I put in front of them, um, at least tasting it. And then most of the time they eat it. They love vegetables. Um, so we've had some interesting new veggies with that. I love supporting our local farm um, and we'll continue to do so. Um, we also get our eggs from there every week and a loaf of bread from a local baker. So our farm box is like, it literally saves me emergency trips to the grocery store, which is awesome, especially right now. The other thing is that they have a great plant supply, so I'm really excited for them to actually open their doors back up in the spring. Right now, like, every Friday, I just, like, pop over there and go walk in their giant fridge and grab my bag that has my name on it and walk out. Um, because Maine. <laughs> and um, there's no one there. Like, we just go get our thing, and then we're done. Um, and then they always throw in, like, something, like a cool snack. So, like, this week we got tomatoes and garlic and salad greens and then our eggs and our bread. And then, like, for the treat, they threw in chips because they gave us, like, kind of salsa in ingredients. Um, we've gotten some jellies from them as our like little treat, um, hot chocolates, mugs, like they just, I think it's the stuff that they like normally carry in their store, um, like when they're open and then they don't have it. My headache is like kind of there. I think it's just, I think my jaw just hurts from, I didn't, I never know if I clench my teeth and that gives me the headache or if I clench my teeth when I have the headache and then it makes my jaw hurt after. And it's kind of like a chicken or the egg thing for me. Um, but anyways, so gardening, um, if you don't already watch Lynette of Home Sitting on the Homefront, she um, lives in Massachusetts, but she also has a husband in the Navy. And so she's lived in a lot of other places, including like Virginia and Guam. And she's gardened in all those places. And now she's gardening in Massachusetts on like, like her family's old plot. And so she also started a YouTube channel for her garden called Armstrong Acres and it is amazing. And she recently did a Google meets like call for beginning gardeners, giving them like kind of the basic rundowns, especially of gardening in New England, which is very different than gardening in Southern California. Cause now I have to pay attention to frost dates um, but I don't have to pay attention to watering as much, which is kind of exciting. Um, but so it's a whole new like learning curve for me. So this has been like super beneficial for me to be able to listen to somebody talk about gardening on the East Coast. So she's amazing. And I just wanted to publicly floss tubally thank her because Lynette, thank you. Um, so amazing and I also want to show you so I've been I'm a I'm a thrifter I love going to Goodwill like on my way home from work and if you are not a like a regular thrifter you're not always going to find great stuff sometimes you're going to find good stuff sometimes meh which actually I should have brought you the really awesome thing that I just found so not cross stitch related knitting related I got a set of like interchangeable knit picks um cable needles like the whole set like the $55 set for $4 uh brand new still in the packages so I um if you go to Goodwill like every other day every three days uh you're gonna find amazing things if you go once every week every two weeks you're probably gonna find some stuff if you just pop in every once in a while it, it's more of that like you're gonna have to get lucky and be there on the right day but if you go more often then you're more likely to be there on the right day so anyways thrift shop blurby blurb i found this it's a um italian made um journal and it's been sitting on my shelf i bought it for a dollar it still had its original price tag on it from whatever store it normally came from for like 35 dollars and it came home with me and I, and I never knew what to do with it. And Lynette was like, you have to have a garden journal so that you know what you planted. My cuckoo clock's going off. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> so that you know what you planted and when you planted it and so this is my new garden journal and it's already filled with fun um notes and tips and tricks from lynette's first video and she's probably hopefully please 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 gonna do some more um and i'm really really excited i have my seed orders in for this year already and am hopefully going to be ready to go after our last frost which is a while i will have two weeks of really intense work to do um, to get the garden ready to plant once the ground is soft enough to actually dig into and then like getting it everything in there it is snowing a lot. They were like, you're gonna get like one to two inches. Mm -mm. No, it's been snowing since last night at like nine. It like kind of stopped at one point, but not really. It just wasn't like sticking. It had like melted a little bit and now it's like snowing. But it's not stormy. It's very peaceful. It's quiet snow. The trees look pretty. They all have like the snow on the branches. Um, I think that's it. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching. Um, I just really want to encourage everybody to like find the things that make you happy. I had a really hard time, um, this year so far and the first like two and a half weeks, three weeks of this year were brutal in my brain. Um, I was really angry. I was not really nice. Um, and I was really sad. And, um, it wasn't fun. Um, and I know that not everybody has the ability or the opportunity to pull themselves out of a funk like that. Um, but if you can find the things that make you happy and and do them and as much as we want to care for the whole world and fight for the whole world it's important that we do that but it's also important that we protect ourselves and our brains um and our families and I was not able to be the mom that I needed to be um with the fights that I was fighting and I was really only fighting them in my head. Um, and so you have to just take a step back and look at yourself. Um, it's not a bad thing to fight the fights. It's a good thing to fight the fights. And we need people that can fight the fights. But if you can't, don't force yourself into it because you feel like you need to be that, that person. Um, We'll all do what we need to do when we need to do it. And um, just, you don't know what battles anybody else is fighting. And um, choosing to cut people out of your lives is okay. It is okay. You don't need people that make you feel bad. Um, and if you need to get help from an outside source to get to a better place, please do that. Um, please reach out, whether it's to a friend or a professional, um, but just know that you're enough and that you do enough and that you are enough um, because you, ha you have to know that about yourself. Um, if you always think that you're failing and you always think that everyone's against you and the world becomes an ugly place. And as true as that may be at some times, um, it's not true all the time. And it's important to recognize that and not just live in the yuck. Because if you just live in the yuck, um, you, can, you can win fights and you can win the good thing, but make sure that you're that you and yours are taken care of because it's not it's not worth that 
now if you made it this long thank you so much for watching thank you for listening to my rambles and listening to me talk about cross stitch and gardening I don't know if that's going to be like a normal thing. It might be. You might get to go on a garden tour with me. Um, but yeah, we do so We do a lot of indoor gardening right now. So snake plant. I'm going to show you the other ones. Might get a little blown out on the window. And if you do, I'm sorry. And I'll probably just edit it out. But um, I'll take you over there really quick. And then... Extreme close up. <laughs> Legos. So, let's see. Hold tight. I hope I don't make. Okay, so I am currently propagating our Monstera. I'm bringing, hopefully, back to life some string of pearls. They're not going to focus. Are they? Kind of. So there's new ones like coming, but they all died. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so snake plant that was a baby from the big pot some variegated pothos. I have two of those going. Their pots are coming this week. Um, this is a propagated wandering Jew. It's a really pretty purple underneath. It is going upstairs into my daughter's room. You know, avocado plant, because they're fun. Spider plant. Good times. So, um, here we go. Hold on. There's my wandering Jew, too. So that's what I propagated off of. He needs a little bit of trimming, some love, but he's hanging out up there. Anyways, oh, this guy, I don't know what he is. He came from a clipping from my work and He's doing great. Um, this is a new leaf. Um, there's another new one coming from there. I thought I had one more. I don't know what that one's doing. But yeah. Let's see. Some snow. Pretty trees outside. See, that's what I'm talking about where like the snow like catches in the trees and it's really pretty. But yeah, that's, the snow like came and then melted and now it's coming again, but it doesn't look like it's sticking. I think it's kind of hot outside for snow and by hot, I mean like 36 degrees. So anyways, on that note, pretty snow, pretty snow. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.